Good morning, Wellspring. Good morning. Good morning to you folks out there in Zoom land. We're going to mute you and we'll unmute you after the service ends. Early birds meet Sunday mornings at 9.30 via Zoom. The link is in your weekly email and on the website. Upcoming speakers, we have Peggy Shen today, Reverend Kamatara next week, the 15th. Randy Granger will be here on the 22nd. And on the 29th, we have a video, How to Be Happy Every Day, It Will Change the World. I'm looking forward to that. <clears throat> The Lunch Bunch will meet this week, which is January 11th at 11.30 at Cracker Barrel. Uh, we've changed from Tuesday to Wednesday. <clears throat> and our monthly board meeting, board of trustees meeting is also this week on Wednesday evening at 6.30. It'll be on Zoom. All are welcome. If you want to join, uh, please see Edward for the link and we'd love to have you were there. Um, just a reminder, uh, February is our annual meeting and it's going to be on the 12th of February. So it'll be after service and uh, it's always the second Sunday of February. And we're going to, of course, feed you. We don't, we have to keep you around some way. So sandwiches or salads or something will be provided. Our Thursday evening group is starting up again this Thursday, the 12th at 7 p.m. Uh, this can be both on Zoom and uh, or in person. This series will be talks by such well-known authors as Bruce Lipton, Lisa Rankin, Dr. Mike Dow, Lynn McTaggart. Almost all of these people have some initials behind their names, such as PhD, MD, etc. We'll be covering topics such as regenerate new cells and boost your immunity naturally, the extraordinary healing power of group intention, remarkable sacred healing tools, transforming physical inju injury into spiritual opportunity, self-love rituals to be happier and healthier now. Um, if you wanna Join us either in person or on Zoom. Just talk to Edward or Cleona to get the link if you don't already have it. Thursday, the January 26th, the New Thought Ladies Luncheon will be held at CSL. And uh, all ladies are welcome to attend. <clears throat> Lastly, our prayer team remain, remains ready to serve and support you. You may submit a request via our webpage or give it to Edward. Our prayer team meets virtually on Tuesday afternoons at 4.15 p.m. to pray with you. You may consider sitting in your quiet space during this time. We know we are one in spirit and the energy of prayer knows no limits. Today, as we awaken to the possibilities which open before us, we realize that spirit has been on the move all the time we slept. The creative intelligence has been making all things new as the night unfolded. Our bodies have been recreated in its image and likeness, our hearts beating to its rhythm, our minds renewed with its knowing spirit with its knowing. Spirit is the source and activity that is all life. And so we claim our divine inheritance this day. We say yes to the renewing power that is moving in, as, and through us right now. We say yes to greater love and deeper peace, 
higher knowing, stronger spirituality, and full vitality. We allow ourselves to be aligned with spirit so that we may express that boundless possibility every minute that we are on the move today. We are filled with gratitude as we keep our minds open, our hearts loving, and exude a joyful expression of our oneness with spirit. Developing and maintaining this sense of gratitude, we accept our ultimate destiny now. Life is good, and so it reveals, reveals itself to us today and every day. And so it is. Please stand, if you are able, for our song of joy. Good morning. So uh, <clears throat> I want to say two things about the song of joy. We have to sing loud because that microphone and this microphone needs to pick up everybody singing. And the second thing is about singing loud. Singing activates your chakras and you have this flow of joy when you, especially when you sing loud. So let's.
I picked that up on the on the Zoom. Okay, now we will say our vision, vision, our mission, and our affirmation. Our vision to elevate spiritual consciousness in our world. Our mission to support individual spiritual quests through celebration, study, counsel, loving fellowship, and service. And our affirmation. We welcome the new year. We acknowledge it as a time for new beginnings and a fresh outlook. Spirit brings forth new understanding of ancient wisdom and a greater expression of itself through us. We accept this new perspective and the in, be in service to our fellow beings and to the universe. So it is. Now we're ready for music. Thank you, Barry. That's one of my favorite songs. Mm -hmm. The reading today comes out of a book by Rich, Ernest Holmes and Raymond Charles Barker called Richer Living. How to use your mind power for more successful living. And it's one of those where you read a different uh, little thing every day. I chose January 4th for today's reading. The affirmation, I know that my spirit is free from all limitations. I know that I understand the truth about myself. From Genesis 17, 1, I am the Almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. From the Upanishad, whoever knows the God who is without commencement, without end, who within this impervious world is the creator of the universe, who is of an infinite form, the one penetrator of the universe, 
becomes liberated from all bonds. And from the Tao Te, Tao Te Ching, trust it is that the Tao produces all things, nourishes them, brings them to their full growth, nurses them, completes them, matures them, maintains them, and overspreads them. And now the words of Ernest Holmes and Raymond Charles Barker. Our Chinese text tells us that Tao, which means spirit, produces everything, nourishes <coughs> everything, and maintains everything. It spreads itself over everything. It flows through everything and is in all things. Indeed, being all that is, there can be nothing outside it. Our Hindu text tells us that in such degree as we understand God, who is the one penetrator of the universe, in such degree we become liberated. And the Hebrew text says, walk before me and be thou perfect. We are to recognize the divine in everything, to speak to the divine in everything, to see it everywhere. Lift the stone and you will find me. Cleave the wood, for there am I. There is a mystical presence which pervades the universe. The fragrance of the rose, the beauty of the dew drop glistening in the sun are manifestations of its presence and activity. This mystical presence welling up in our consciousness evermore proclaims itself as the source and root of all. This source, Hermes tells us, forevermore proclaims itself as the oneness, being source and root of all, is in all things as the root and source. And the Christian scriptures tell us, I am over all, in all, and through all. The enlightened of the ages have told us that it is this God within us that recognizes itself or himself in everything we are. I know that my spirit is free from all limitation, that my physical body and my objective affairs reflect and manifest the perfection which I feel, the wholeness which I am certain of, and the prosperity which rightfully belongs to me. And so it is. And so it is. Now it's time for Peggy to come up and bless us with her talk. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Oh, oh, we got a new solution for this, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, good morning and uh, Happy New Year. I, I think for me, I, I say Happy New Year to people like for at least the first full month of January because I have to remind myself it's 2023. <laughs> Anybody else have that same kind of, uh, of slowness to catch on to the fact that we're in the new year? <coughs> So the title of my talk today is New Year's Dissolutions, not New Year's Resolution. So we'll see what we, what we get into um, as we flow with that. But over the years, I don't know how many of you made New Year's resolutions. There's a couple shaking their head, yes. I don't know. I can't see the Zoom community, so I don't know what they're saying. But are you still on track? Good. Yeah, that's good. Well, that's great. That's because we're religious scientists, maybe. But I, I have a feeling I, I heard once a, a percentage like really high, like, you know, 67, I mean, two thirds of the people that set a resolution by the end of January have already, you know, already lost it. Right. And that certainly was true of me, um, has been true of me in the past. Um, so I kind of gave up on the idea of, of, of New Year's resolutions. But the more I was thinking about it in preparation for what I would talk about today, uh, I began to recognize that for me, it's more about what, I, what, what, I'm, what I'm resolving to dissolve in my world. You know, what, what I want to let go of in order to let something else in. Because the new resolution is about big C word, not cancer, change. 
right? New Year's resolutions are about something we've dis- we might we might want to change. Well, we don't change it if we don't make the decision that we're really going to change it. So it's all about making the decision. But I gave up on this idea years ago, and and so I um I learned this from Sandy Scott years ago that I choose a word or a phrase for the year. So like last year, my word was availability because I decided that the greatest ability I had to offer the world maybe was my availability. This year, the hit that I got was about the word loving. It's either, you know, both directions, letting the love in. Uh, I need to focus a little more on self-love too and giving the love out so that there's this reciprocity that I am a part of the instrument for that this is, and, and so to me, the word or phrase is, I don't know, it was just simpler to remember every day than some whole long resolution, right? And <clears throat> if my word or phrase was something more towards the positive, then I would be able to maybe use it a little bit better to guide my daily thoughts and actions and interactions with other people. So this idea of dissolution, though, and thinking about the new year and how most people have dissolved their resolve, you know, by the end of January to listen to the the social scientists do, who do these kinds of surveys and reports. I thought, well, you know, really what we ought to be looking at from our viewpoint of science of mind and how we see the world working and how we see our world is how we see the world working, that this idea of uh, limitations that Jim was talking about in the reading today, that we are of a belief that we are limitless, that we that there are no limitations. So what's in our way typically is a limiting belief, a limitation of some sort. And that that's what needs to get dissolved in order to come up with a better resolve. So over the 50 years that, nearly 50, it'd be 50 years this year, 2023, in June of this year, that I have been in the real estate business in Las Cruces. So, you know, we always have a lot of sales trainings and seminars that are now kind of like webinars, you know, the, the things are different in the 50 years that have gone on. Um, I've been exposed to a lot of great teachers, a lot of great mentors and coaches, uh, seminars and these business planning sessions and things of that character where they want to promote the idea of setting a goal or achieving a goal or creating a business plan for where you're going to, you know, up your income, all that sort of kind of thing. And then for the last 30 years of that 50, I've been involved in my studies of science of mind. So that the two things kind of dovetail, but they have a couple of conflicts here and there in my world. I'm more a believer, like Tony Robbins says, that you set a goal not to achieve the goal, to, but to become who you become in the process of achieving it. I really think that that is the truth of the matter of how it works is who we become and how we become who we become that really is 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 how it works. So I have this formula or this not formula, but this idea that I've created over these 30 years that have added on in part of the 50, that there is a universal law out there that I call the law of substitution. Now, for me, the law of substitution is that anything I'm saying, doing, being, acting, feeling, whatever that characterization of it may be, is a substitute for any other possible idea, thought, action, or or, uh, feeling that I could have chosen to have had. Because I've learned through science of mind that we're always a choice, right? This life that happens through us that Jim was reading to us about today rather than that happens to us. That I'm the, <clears throat> I'm the guy with the pen that's writing my life story. Nobody else is holding that pen up but me, and I can pick it up and rewrite the story anytime I'm ready to choose to do so, which includes at the beginning of the year or every day is a new day for the beginning of a new year. So the law of substitution for me is that because anything can be there instead of what I'm feeling, doing, seeing, believing, acting on, I have the opportunity to figure out, now how do I make a choice? Well, by definition, to me, the word substitution implies or requires that there is a displacement or a replacement of something that was there. You know, if I want to move this candle over here, 
I got to move both of them to make that substitution, right? So the law of substitution for me has to do with that something first that needs to be dissolved, moved, displaced, replaced. So wouldn't you know it, you know, Ernest has a few things to say that kind of involve this word dissolution or dissolve. So I want to tell you a little bit about that as long as I can find my way in the book. So this book here is a book that you probably have in your bookstore because this book is used universally throughout Centers for Spiritual Living in teaching the class Beyond Limits, which is the foundational class, one of the options for a foundational class for science of mind to begin your studies towards practitioner or, or your studies of what science of mind is. And it's called How to Change Your Life by Ernest Holmes. This particular edition, and I don't know if they have a later one than this one, um, has an introduction by Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith. So in this book, I gotta put my glasses down. <clears throat> <clears throat> Ernest has a, and it's not unlike your book, but it's not like 365 days, but it does have basically the format that it lays out what's your problem, and then what Ernest proposes as sort of your substitution for the problem the solution or the affirmation for it. So this particular, I don't know, theme, topic, title, whatever, there's just a couple of pages, a piece, you know, is called Dissolve Obstacles and Wrong Conditions. And in here, and this fits, I think, with what you were reading to us in the reading today too, Jim, about getting this God thing, the understanding of God, that is what empowers our life. And the greater our understanding is of God, the greater our ability is to work that power that comes through us, that is God. So he says, with a penetrating, like that word penetrating again, <laughs> from Jim's reading, these are things, these, um, with a penetrating spiritual vision, you can dissipate an obstruction, remove the obstacle, or dissolve the wrong condition. So. If Ernest says it's so, it must be so. I must, I must have that ability to do that that he says that all of us have. So if I'm resolved to change something in my life, this might be a good book to use, How to Change Your Life. But there needs to be something that's exchanged for what is. So if I want if I want to exchange that candle for the blue one, I got to go get the blue one, and then I got to take the white one away and put the blue one in, right? So I have to figure this out by what I what I say is my choice for change requires a bit of reverse engineering, and by that I mean you know we have this idea that we promote in science of mind that I believe is true that. The outpicturing of our lives and how we choose to see our lives is really something that needs to be kind of traced back to our thought, our belief. So for me, and I suggest it's true for all of us probably, that that choice, if I want to resolve to do something differently or have something different or, different, or be different, the place to start is where I am with what is. And evaluating the what is, or the what just happened, or, or any of those things, from the standpoint of, now what was I thinking? If I'm not happy about what I see, or what I perceive, or what I believe, what I have received, I mean, I have to go back to see what I believe. Because I believe that's how the process works, is that we come from the belief, so I believe something, then I receive that same thing. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? I receive that because I have perceived it. So to me, it's the believe, perceive, receive is how that process flows in my life and in the lives of others. So if there's something that I have received, the what is the, the, the current status of my life as I perceive it, it goes back to something that I have chosen to believe. And if I want to change the part that I'm receiving from, I got to move through that perception back to the belief. So that to me is, is my sense of what the reverse engineering is 
of the process. <clears throat> Otherwise, I won't necessarily get enough of a clarity around what it is I need to change at the level of first cause, what we call first cause, which is that part, the mind, the part that's in there. So this out picturing takes me to the, now what was I thinking? Because the chronic thinking of something is what creates a belief. I learned that from Esther Hicks years ago, that that's her term, chronic thinking, meaning you think in the same thought over and over and over again, which means you're probably having the same feeling over and over again that comes from that thought, which means you're creating an attraction with, through that feeling and that vibration out that what you're, you know, remember I've said to you a number of times, what are you putting out into the field? That's where you go back to look for what am I putting out into the field that's Wow, coming back to me, go figure, you know, it comes back to me because I put it out there. So there's where, there's where that, that idea of coming into the process of substitution needs to happen for me. This is what's cause. This is another cause that I have the option to choose. Instead, under my universal law of substitution. Now, will I make the choice that, you know, that might be a different thing, but something has to change in order for there to be a change in me. I've got to change it. So all of that, when I get to the point of reversing it backwards and looking at, oh, yeah, you guys remember, I'm going to age myself here, you know, I could have had a V8, you know, um, when I recognize what I could have, should have had, I ought have done otherwise. That becomes what I call my not-to-do list. We're always programmed in our society, I think, to have the to-do list, you know, the check off the to-do list, the to-do list. I don't know if you guys are like me, but the list is longer than my life. And so it just ain't going to happen, right? And it's easier in some respects for me to focus on the not-to-do list. It's a little more manageable, maybe, for me. And when I get rid of what's in the way of where I want to be, then I might be able to actually accomplish more on the to-do list. So Ernest has, uh, in, the, in this little book of How to Change Your Life, he's got a, a section in here that he gives us a, a few ideas about how to do this substitution process to change our thinking, to change our feeling, to change the life, to change our outcome. So he says, think of an iceberg with the sun's rays falling on it, and soon it's going to dissolve. That which was the obstruction will become liquid, flow away. Perhaps that is the meaning of spiritual transcendence, inner awareness, and the power of nonviolence. The great, the good, and the wise have always known this truth. And you can know it too. Once again, Ernest promising me something I'm going to go looking for. So he suggests to us, say this. That's how it's set up. It's have, he presents the, the concept over here. And then on this side, he tells you what to, what to say or what to think, what to affirm. So in this case, here's his list of substitutions. Today, I practice non-resistance. Disregarding everything that seems to contradict the reality in which I believe, I am affirming that reality is actually operating in my life and turning resolutely away from everything that denies the good to experience, I affirm that good. In the midst of fear, I proclaim faith. These are his substitutions, right? At the center of uncertainty, I proclaim security. In the midst of want, I proclaim abundance. Where unhappiness seems to exist, I announce joy. Wasn't that exactly what was in the song today? I can choose joy. He says, there's no situation and no condition that resists these transcendent thoughts, for they proclaim the omnipotence of God, which is the omnipresence, omnipotence, 
ageless, birthless, deathless that Jim was reading to us about, and the divine guidance of the mind that can accomplish all things. So uh, about a, um, a week or so back, I was... Um, Oh and, oh, and I wanted to mention that in the index of this book, on pages 316 and 317, there are 30 more, uh, like little two phrases that are that are listing that if you want to go to this, you go to that page, and he tells you how to make the substitution, or you know what to talk about and think about instead, instead of what you're thinking about and talking about as a substitution in the universal law of substitution. So there's about 30 topics, including this one that I read to you about dissolving conditions. So last week I was um, listening to a podcast by Tim Ferriss. I've on his list for many years, and I don't always go and listen. I don't always open the emails even. I'm just like, you know, too busy. So I do these things. I don't know about the rest of you guys. I open things in my email on in, uh, intuition, intuitively. You know, I, I look up. Remember when I talked to you guys about looking up, like, okay, what do I, what do I, do I open this or where do I get the hit? You know, it's about practicing those kinds of things too, where you're tuning in. So I tuned into this, this podcast and uh, it was very interesting, but the thing that really um, I wanted to share with you because it was just kind of an amazing thing for me. I don't know why I'm always amazed at being amazed, but I, I still am, you know, and he, he asked the interviewee, he said, if you could put the best advice of the experience of your life into a billboard, what would it say? And while the interviewee is thinking about it, the first thing that hits me is <clears throat> if I were asked that question, my answer would be, don't believe everything you think. And so, and my second alternative, because I had time to think of the second one while the other guy is thinking about it, is that, <coughs> excuse me, you're just a belief away. You're just a belief away from what you want. You got to dissolve that one to get to the next level of what you want. So then the interviewee comes on and answers the question. And he says that what he would put on the billboard is don't believe everything you think. <laughs> well, I was blown away by that, but Tim Ferriss was blown away. He said, I have never heard that said before. I have never read that or heard that anywhere, that phrase, don't believe everything you think. Well, I've only seen it in writing once myself, and it was on the bumper sticker on a car that of someone who was attending the Center for Spiritual Living many, many years ago, 20, like 20 years ago. And I've never seen it since, nor before. But the day that I saw it on that car, I thought, man, I'm adopting that for my mantra, which is why it was close to my brain when he, when he asked the interviewee, and the interviewee is going to have to like, oh, what am I going to say? Uh, I knew exactly what I would say is don't believe everything you think. Or, as I said, I learned this one more recently than that one. Uh, this, this, um, I think I got this from Wayne Dyer about you're just a belief away from what you want, what you desire. So I wanted to share that with you because that truly is what I want you to come away with today is that you're just a belief away from making your New Year's resolution happen. But that belief's got to get dissolved first. You've got to dissolve in order to, to, to resolve what's going on, right? So that coincidence was, you know, something that we know there's no coincidence, right? There are no accidents. But that is my mantra, and I'm uh, happy to loan it to you because it was came from an anonymous source to me. So <laughs> don't believe everything you think. So how do we deal with this belief thing and, and changing the beliefs? And Ernest has something to say about that in this book, too, that I wanted to share with you. Oops, the glasses are down here. Um, he says... Um, that if your thinking processes really are under your personal control. So do we believe that those are under our personal control? N you know, nobody's doing it to us. Nobody's forcing us to think something. Even if they put us in jail and, and we lived in one of those dictatorships where people can't do anything, we'd still have the ability to think the thought we think, right? So far, up to now, don't know the matrix is going to do to us. 
It says, if your thinking processes are really under your personal control, as you will agree that they must be, he says, and if thought is acted upon by the creativity of mind to produce results in accordance with your belief, then you surely do have the power to become the master of your own affairs and to bring to pass the conditions that you desire. So he says, let us keep in mind that we not only have the God-given ability to do this kind of results-oriented thinking, but we also have the right, you put that in italics, we have the right to do it. And I would say we have the obligation because it's our consciousness raising that we're obligated to do. He says, in connection with God power within you. Again, part of what we heard in the reading today. There are many other aspects, <coughs> but this one, again in italics, the right and the ability and the power to think creatively so that you have a more desirable experience is such an impressive right and so exceedingly important that it should be the basis for your life. And I know that this is my aspiration, you know, to, to you know, Ernest is the inspiration for my aspiration to have that be the basis for my life. Uh, you know, but sometimes the perspiration gets in the way, you know, I don't do the work, I, I, I don't get the work done. So I want to offer this to you because this is something that I have, that I learned, and I think it might have been in my foundations class or it was in my first, it was in the PRAC 1 class. Um, there was this reading that impressed me, and I printed it out, put it on the inside of the cabinet in my bathroom so that I could take a look at it if I remembered, and you know, if I made the practice daily to look at it, to remind myself, and I'll share this with you via email. If you want, if you want to have it, you let me know. But at any rate, when when life gets in the way of that being the basis of my life, this is the thing that I turn to, and it's called "Keep Fresh Before Me: The Moments of My High Resolve." Uh, I don't know if those, if you all in the room have ever heard of Howard Thurman. Howard Thurman was a theologian in a contemporary time uh, with Ernest Holmes. And this is from his book called The Inward Journey. And I reflect back on this always about where my moments of high resolve are. I don't have the paper on my, I need to do that again. I, have, I, don't, I no longer have the paper on the cabinet on the inside of the cabinet of my bathroom. But here's how it goes. Keep fresh before me the moments of my higher resolve. Despite the dullness and the barrenness of the days that pass, if I search with due diligence, I can always find a deposit left by some former radiance. But I'd forgotten. At the time, it was full-orbed, glorious, and resplendent, and I was sure that I would never forget his resolve. In the moment of its fullness, it would illumine my path for all the rest of my journey. But I had forgotten how easy it is to forget. There was no intent to betray what seemed so sure at the time. You know, you don't start out with an intention to break your resolutions, right? <clears throat> but my response was, my response then was whole and clean and authentic. But little by little, there crept into my life the dust and the grit of the journey. Details, lower level demands, all kinds of cross currents going on. Nothing momentous, nothing overwhelming, nothing flagrant. Just wear and tear. If there'd been some direct challenge, like, you know, a clear-cut issue, I would have fought it to the end and beyond. In the quietness of this place, surrounded by the all-pervading presence of my God, my heart whispers, keep fresh before me the moments of my high resolve. 
that in fair weather or in foul, in good times or in tempests, in the days when the darkness and the foe are nameless or familiar, I may not forget that to which my life is committed. Keep fresh before me the moments of my high resolve. So I invite you all to take that in and thank you very much. And that will be the, I'll do what Jim did. That'll be the end of my talk. <laughs> and then we'll have the, 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 uh, <clears throat> the treatment. You know, this, this idea of treatment in the uh, five steps of treatment, the affirmation step is the real or realization step we call it the realization step which to me is the affirmation affirming what is in my life that is here and now in spite of my best thinking that got me here that's going in contrary to it perhaps and so we have these ideas when we are looking at like what do i substitute or whatever these um suggestions from ernest holmes in the book can go right into the little middle of a formula of treatment that you might write out for yourself. And just every day you can do all the rest of it exactly the same and just substitute today's whatever, or this week's, you know, do it by the week, by the month, by but what, whatever works, you know, it's like the best program for you is the one you'll do. <coughs> but right here and right now, I'm gonna affirm that we are here in this moment, in the presence of spirit, that ubiquitous, pervasive, all-knowing, always present, spiritual energy that animates us and all. And our connection to that, through that, is its channel through us as well. So we open ourselves up today to think about what's the first thing I want to get rid of, that I want to substitute something better for my life to be better. Looking at what it is that you resist, what it is that makes you angry, what it is that makes you sad, those are the things to focus in on as the next new path to dissolve, to resolve, to live in joy, to choose joy. And I affirm for each of us here today that we have an intention to dissolve that limitation, that condition, that belief, that perception, in order to resolve at a higher level the outcome in our lives so that we can shine our light, provide that example to others, show them the light within them, teach and learn in whatever order it shows up, for that affirmation that you read today to be the light all the way out into the cosmos. What a grand and glorious thought that we are a part of this cosmos that we're talking about in that affirmation for the month. Our cosmic consciousness results from the mystical consciousness of what Jim read to us of seeing God in everything, seeing all as God is God and will forever be God, even our limitations. We're just choosing to set them aside in order to be more, to do more, and to have more in 2023 so we can share more of that and of ourselves all the way out to the cosmos. And in great gratitude for these beliefs, for this wisdom that we share collectively here, 
for the teachings of Ernest Holmes, Raymond Charles Barker, Howard Thurman, all of the great wisdom teachers who help open us up to the wisdom that lies within us, that is the wisdom of the one mind, that is God's mind, that is my mind and my life now, and yours too. I release these words into the law, knowing that as they are spoken, they are realized in the truth in my life and in yours. And so it is. Amen. Another beautiful one. Thank you. As we acknowledge and receive our virtual and in-person gifts, we give great thanks for the offerings already given and those we will be receiving, because we know that giving and receiving are both part of the one flow. We affirm that we are also part of that flow. We bless these gifts and know they are multiplied throughout our community. There are a number of folks who have contributed to the production of this service. We are grateful for their service. We thank you for joining us today 
Zoom land and here in the sanctuary. Lastly, stay around in the Zoom meeting after service to visit or join us in the social hall. Now you read with me our benediction and followed by our peace song. Spirit in the midst of us is mighty. Joy, peace, and eternal life are our true nature and flow through us into the world, and so it is.